Hello again guys. So let's try to do this particular type of problems. In this problem, uh, we're going to use also the principle of virtual work, but uh, let's read what happens here. It says determine the horizontal deflection at joint E. So we're interested in only knowing the, this displacement at joint E in this way of the truss. If the member BC, now BC is 18 millimeters too long and the member CE is 15 millimeters too short. So we are not interested right now in the external effect of the forces applied to the truss, but the fabrication defect. So that's the only thing. By the way, if you want to calculate uh, problems based on fabrication defect plus loads plus temperature changes, you just have to add the effects. That's it. If you are within the elastic range, you just add the effects for each one of them. But in this case, it's only to show you how can you do a problem and determine what is going to be the drifting, let's say the horizontal drifting or movement or deflection or the formation of the point E uh, due only to those fabrication errors. So let's uh, start working that problem. Virtual work, once again, general principle for virtual work. The virtual external work or the external work, not virtual, has to be equal. The, the work produced by external forces has to be equal to the work produced by internal forces. This is going to be the virtual load that we selected the magnitude of 1 for because it's easy. And this is going to be the whatever we're looking for. In this case, we're looking at the deflection of the point E. Remember that the general principle is I want to know the deflection at point E. I put a load at the point E. And then I let that load ride because of the other effects, which are the internal effects here produced by the real loads, uh, the internal loads. So I'm going to have here is going to be the summation of all the internal forces, all of those internal forces multiply by all the internal deformations. In the case of the truss, remember, these are, if, if we are calculating these only due to the, the internal forces, this is going to be N, N P A over L, A P A over uh, P L over A E. That's going to be the deformation. And these are going to be the virtual forces. So what, how do we do with this problem? How do you approach this problem? The first step is in the other in the in the other case when we have to calculate the the deformation due to loads. The first step is two statics in the real beam. But in this case, we don't have to do that because we already know the deformations. We already know these. Is 18 millimeters too long? And CE is 15 millimeters too short. So that part we already know. So in this particular type of problems, the first step will be do statics in the virtual structure. And that's what we are going to do. So if I put that over there, then I have to calculate all the forces. Let's just start by doing, if you want to do summation of, of forces here. By the way, keep in mind what you need. Because we don't need everything. We only need BC, which is this one. And we need a CE, which is this one. That's all the things that I need. So if this is the only thing that I need, I don't see the point on going through the whole process and calculating every single bar. But it's OK. Let's do it. It doesn't matter. If I do moment here in order to calculate this force, which is going to be in this way, by and this is going to be a y here so i can say that 1 times a divided by 3 is going to be by so by is going to be equal to 2.6 which is going to be equal to ay just by doing moment here okay so 1 times 8 minus 3 times by equals 0 so for by is going to be 1 times a divided by 3 that's the value for by Doing summation of forces in X, meaning AY is going to be that much. Meaning doing summation of forces in in X, in Y, I mean, now in X, this is equal to 1. Now if you go to the whole thing, this is going to be equal to 2.6. This is going to be equal to 
meaning this is going to be equal also to 2.6 and this is going to be equal to 1 and this is going to be equal to 1 and I know I said I don't need that but I do need this one here so if I take this one I can calculate the value for this one internal force which by the way has to come in this way uh, because if you look at the if you look at the drawing here I'm gonna extract the join but you shouldn't I mean you should immediately know the values of the forces but let's say that you are learning because this is what you are doing then you don't you're gonna extract the join like this and this is gonna be BC and this is gonna be uh, the other joint BD the other force BD now if you look at this I can do summation of forces in X equals 0 and the angle here is 3 4 5 the 3 4 5 or you can calculate that angle same way but if I do that and I do summation of forces in X then you're going to have negative 1 plus BC multiplied by 3 fifth 3 fifth 3 fifth the horizontal component equals 0 so you can calculate here BC which is going to be 1.6 so we get the 1.6 now for BC 1.6 which is going to be the same one here 1.6 and I don't need this one so I can calculate it really easy because if I do summation of forces in Y I can calculate that but I really don't need it because when you do this multiplication the deformation here the internal deformation is going to be 0 0 0 0 and 0 so I don't need those values for anything I just need the values that are being deformed uh, so I don't I'm not going to calculate that so I can come to this other joint and when I go to this joint I need this bar so I can calculate that bar either from here or from here believe it or not it's easier from joint C at this moment uh, because I already know this and I already know that and if I go to this one what do I have to do summation of forces in X calculate this and then calculate that so I can go to the joint C directly it's gonna be easier go to the joint C and then I'm going to calculate this force which is CE CE right there this force is CE and then I'm going to have this one 1.6 this one 2.6 and then this one which I don't know what it is I know this force is going to come in this way but I don't know how much is that but I know this one and I know this one so I do summation of forces in Y equals 0 and if I do summation of forces in Y equals 0 I have negative 2.6 plus CE plus this value which is 1.6 this force multiplied by once again we need the angles here and I know this is 4 this is 3 and this is 5 so the vertical one is going to be 4 fifth equals 0 and then I can solve for CE and CE is going to be equal to 1.6 to the very end times 4 divided by 5 usually we'll do times 0 0.8 minus 2.6 1.3 and pass it to the other side that's why it's positive here so this is 1.3 and that's it we don't need anything else that's the only thing that we need in the virtual structure nothing else now this force here the BC 1.6 remember that we calculated BC 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 is in compression you can see here BC is in compression and CE is in tension those are the only values that we need here now what do we do we are gonna build a table also the, the table is gonna be super simple table remember now I don't need area length or anything like that I just need the deformation the, this is the deformation the, the, the deformation provided by the fabrication defect let me put here fabrication defect 
So this is the deformation in millimeters. I need the internal force N or U, whatever you want to call it. And then I have the internal force multiplied by the deformation because that's what we have here, the internal virtual forces multiplied by the deformation. So it's going to be N times delta. And the members that we are interested in determining is BC and CE or EC. So CE and BC. BC is 18 millimeters too long. Too long means stretching, means positive. CE is too short. Too short means compression, 15 millimeters here. N for CE is 1.3. And for BC is 1.6 in compression. For BC is negative 1.6. And for CE is positive 1.3. Now, when you do this multiplication, this is going to be negative 20. This is going to be negative 30, I think. Yeah, negative 20, negative 30. Add them up, divide by 1, because <laughs> divide by 1, so add them up, and then you're going to have a deflection of negative 50 millimeters. Negative. That negative means that originally we assume our virtual force going to the right. If we got the negative, that means that the deflection is going to the left. So it moves to the left. And that's all that this problem is asking you to do. Now, this problem could be asking also for the vertical, or is, is, it could be acting al asking also for the internal fabrication errors plus loads. Then if it's the case, you just have to do this, what we did here, for the in uh, fabrication defects and you have to repeat it now with the external loads and then add both effects into only one result. See you later guys, keep watching. Now the next video is going to be due to the uh, temperature changes in the structure. See you later, bye.